This is the first lion I've ever sculpted. So I gathered a bunch of lion reference online that consisted of some photos, but also a lot of equerche or anatomy charts or anatomy sculptures of lions because they have side views, top views, basic schematics that I can copy from. And I don't use backgrounds to trace over. And I initially started out just doing it for my imagination. I collected reference, but I wasn't studying it prior to doing the sculpture. And what I like to do sometimes is to see how far I can get out of my imagination. And I'll tell you the point on this where I actually start looking at reference. What it does for me, when I take it as far as I can go from my imagination, it points out shortcomings as far as my preconceptions of what a line, in this example, what I think it looks like and what it actually does. And there's a definite error I can see now as I'm reviewing this that I would never make again. And I kind of knew it to a degree when I was doing it, but I didn't know to what degree until I started looking at the reference. Any second now, it gets to the point where I started looking at reference. So I got a basic likeness, and then right about there, I started looking at reference. It's off camera, but the glaring mistake was the legs are too far apart. Throughout this whole sculpture, the primary thing I had to keep in mind is lions, like any cat, like a house cat or a jaguar, are very narrow. But at the same time, lions and tigers, big cats, have a certain amount of muscle mass. They're very strong. At the same time, they're very narrow. You can make them look like a paper-thin lion from the side. It would look fine once you look at the top view or the front view. It looks too skinny. So it's a balancing act between a sleek, narrow creature, but also a super strong creature with the muscle around the shoulders and the upper arms, as well as the hindquarters and big paws. This was an exercise because it's my first lion that I'm sculpting. I was relying pretty heavily on the anatomy charts of lions. At the same time, they're inconsistent. There's different people that put out anatomy charts. I start referencing one, and then I realize as I move on to the next one that they don't line up. And so I said, well, I gotta make the paw smaller. I gotta make the shoulder area smaller. What, there's an extra muscle in here? I gotta correct it. But I realize that since this is my first one I'm doing, it's inevitably gonna be confusing. It's just like, if you look at the beginning of this video to see the uh, Schwarzenegger sculpture, not only did I get the likeness, but I got the anatomy, and I got the anatomy in a pose and, and instead of the standard T pose. It's uh, an, a difficult to do pose, plus every body part looks like Schwarzenegger's body part. On so many l different levels, it's a high degree of, of difficulty. Whereas this lion, I'm not that familiar with lion anatomy. and I'll do it to a point that I, that I think looks acceptable, but a lion expert would say, oh, wait a second, you got this wrong. You got all kinds of things wrong. But at the same time, practically every single ecorche human anatomy thing that I see for sale has flaws to the point that I it's not that usable to me because I can see, well, I can do better than that. They're just copying off of what somebody else did and that other person did that wrong. And it's probably the same with lion sculptures or lion ecrochet, lion charts. They probably have a lot of mistakes in them. Of course, you can go from photographs, but it's the same thing with, with bodybuilding type stuff or just regular human anatomy. They're very hard to read sometimes. The delineation's not like anatomy charts. Muscles blend into each other. And there's different levels of body fat and there's different muscle shapes and you're catching movement 
in certain poses that makes the muscle look unreadable, you know, based on what you think it would look like from a chart. So there's a lot of confusion on your first lion, for example. When I do a bunch of these, if I see some discrepancies from reference material to reference material, I'll better be able to, to determine why that is, whether it's the you know, bad art on the part of the artist that's doing a muscle chart or the angle of the photograph or the fat levels of the line or maybe the line of deformity or whatever. But right now I'm just, just to get my first line done. So the primary thing is the narrowness of the lion. The legs are relatively close together. They stand on their toes. They have a big rib cage, but at the same time it's narrow. Their ears face forward. There are similarities to humans. If you look at the front of the forearm, you can see the separation of the extensors and the flexor muscles. And you can see that throughout certain parallels in the triceps, the trapezius, the hindquarters, the, the lat muscles, etc. to humans. And if you are already familiar with other animals, like with horse anatomy or dogs or whatever, which I'm not particularly insofar that I haven't done dog sculptures, but if you have, there's a lot of parallels and you'll have a head start. And I'm changing the lighting on this one because I'm looking at reference that has certain lighting and it's helping me read light and dark better if I light my model the same as the reference material. And this is where I left it at right here. I didn't go beyond this level because I just because I just needed a base and then I'm going to turn this baseline into like 10 different other lines like a pre different prehistoric lines and I'm going to pose them in different positions so I didn't want to go to too much trouble on my baseline it'll be my base for my subsequent lines and I'll learn from each of those lines because I've got to put in a lot of detail and and pose them and it'll almost be like starting from scratch in certain ways but I will have a little bit of a head start plus I've already done one which will speed things along then I took the model into Blender and I just did a turnaround. I gave it a kind of a dark metallic look. Now these are going to be turned into prehistoric lions like the American lion, the saber-toothed cats or smilodons which were found in La Brea tar pits. So I'll post some of those as I sculpt them.